Hi, my name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette in South Los Angeles. Today is Monday, July 31st, and we celebrate the feast day of St. Ignatius of Loyola, priest, one of, the, one of the founders of the Jesuit order. They would correct me if I said the founder. But let us begin, as I always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, who raised up St. Ignatius of Loyola in your church to further the greater glory of your name, grant that by his help we may imitate him in fighting the good fight on earth and merit to receive with him a crown in heaven. You are Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses turned and came down the mountain with the two tablets of the commandments in his hands. Tablets that were written on both sides, front and back. Tablets that were made by God, having inscriptions on them that were engraved by God himself. Now, when Joshua heard the noise of people shouting, he said to Moses, that sounds like a battle in the camp. But Moses answered, it does not sound like cries of victory nor does it sound like cries of defeat. The sounds that I hear are cries of revelry. As he drew near the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing. With that, Moses' wrath flared up so that he threw the tablets down and broke them at the base of the mountain. Taking the calf that had been made, he fused it in the fire and then ground it down to powder, which he scattered on the water and made the children of Israel drink it. Moses asked Aaron, what did his people ever do to you that you should lead them into so grave a sin? Aaron replied, let not my Lord be angry. You know well enough how prone the people are to evil. They said to me, Make us a God to be our leader. As for the man Moses, who brought us out from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. So I told them, let anyone who has gold jewelry take it off. They gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and this calf came out. On the next day, Moses said to the people, you have committed a grave sin. I will go up to the Lord then. Perhaps I may be able to make atonement for your sin. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Ah, this people has indeed committed a grave sin in making a God of gold for themselves. If you would only forgive their sin, if you will not, not then strike me out of the book that you have written. The Lord answered, Him only who has sinned against me will I strike out of my book. Now go and lead the people to the place I have told you. My angel will go before you. When it is time for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 
Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of grass, a grass-eating bullock. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Father willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be kind of first fruits of his creatures. Alleluia, alle alleluia. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proposed a parable to the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today we celebrate the feast day of St. Ignatius of Loyola, priest. He is one of the founders, sometimes he's referred to as the founder of the Jesuit order. He is one of the founders of the Jesuit order. Ignatius was born in 1491 at Loyola in Basque country. He served at the court, then chose a military career. Once converted to God, he studied theology at Paris and there won his first companion whom he later formed into the Society of Jesus of Rome, which we now today know as the Jesuits. He exercised a fruitful apostolate by writing and by forming his followers, who accomplished much for the reform of the church. He died at Rome in 1556. That is Loyola, or St. Ignatius of Loyola great saint, one that I happen to personally like, but that's another story. Today we hear a bunch, about a bunch of different stuff, common stuff, seeds, yeast, but these things show a contrast, a contrast between small beginnings and abundant results. Again, small beginnings and abundant results. Seeds and yeast, though they are small, are both alive with power, power enough to offer vast shelter and provide food. I'm particularly fond of these readings because I remember my grandmother making bread. She lived next door, and she used to take these little cubes of the real, you know, uh, real stuff, the real yeast, and crumble them up and put them into her baking, particularly her bread, which was marvelous. But both of these things are example, seeds, yeast, of small beginnings. And in this way, Jesus refers to the small beginnings of his ministry and the power of all small acts to change the world. The world will never be changed by one great, huge act. In fact, that's what everybody keeps looking for, right? The magic bullet. And yet, 
The world can be changed by all of our individual small acts, by us making day-to-day -day changes in how we live. That's what's important. During the height of the COVID pandemic, um, a retired British Army captain by the name of Tom Moore wanted to raise a thousand pounds, about 1,250 American dollars, if you're wondering how much that is. And to thank medical, it was designed to thank medical staff of the UK National Health Service for caring for coronavirus patients. He planned to raise the money by walking 100 laps around the perimeter of his backyard, 10 laps a day, 82 feet per lap, all before his 100th birthday. Now, in response to a global pandemic, how significant is a 99-year-old man walking around his backyard with the aid of his walker, no less? Well, it's like that mustard seed. A person took that mustard seed, sowed it in the field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, and yet, when full grown, it is one of the largest of all the plants. Moore's small, unassuming act captured by the imaginations of many people. He didn't raise a thousand pounds. He raised 32,794,701 pounds. Just imagine, that's just shy of $41 million. And he got them from 1.5 million supporters. Smallest has its own power. The end way out of proportion with beginning. The small seed and beginning of Jesus' ministry changed the world. Even our small acts of grace, our small acts of mercy become the seeds for the work of God. Amen. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. So now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. We pray today for the church, the church particularly that's trying to cope with coming back into a world that has gone from out of COVID into COVID and back out again. So my brothers and sisters pray for the church and for the return of people to the Catholic Church. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are still sick. It's important that we continue to pray for them, who are still sufferers from the pandemic and from other various diseases. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our own individual churches, that they be restored to a vibrant and, and wonderful faith community, both here at St. Bernadette and throughout the world. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for you individually, that you and your families, who maybe have drifted away from the church during this time, find the necessity of returning to the church for your own spiritual development. We pray to the Lord, and we pray for all of those intentions that we hold in the silence of our own hearts. these prayers and those entered into our prayer and petition book, that they may be received and answered by our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, God of compassion, we ask you to hear our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but 
deliver us from evil and deliver us from every evil and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the sacrifice of praise that we have offered with thanksgiving in honor of St. Ignatius, O Lord, bring us to exalt your majesty without end. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Monday. Have a blessed beginning of your week. We'll see you back here tomorrow, Tuesday, first day of August, I think, for Liturgy of the Word. Amen.